Hey guys! That was loud as fuck. Uh, Brooks and Jamie and L- Lucas here, uh, ready to record Paradise Podcast number two, edits versus montages. The long-awaited, we're recording this like a week later, so we know it's in high demand. Right, boys? Yes. Of course it is. Awesome. Um, we had a lot more people planned to get on here, but I slept the entire day, and uh, Reese got mad, so now it's just us three. It's probably going to hate you for like another week or two, at least. <laughs> at least another week. Um, so we're going to be talking about edits versus montages from our perspective. Like we talked in the last podcast, we mentioned, you know, if you guys haven't seen um, Apple Fanatic and Execrated and AAA's uh, podcast where they talked about this exact same topic from their perspective, and they're all montage editors, um, we said that we don't want to start any controversy with this, so just keep that in mind. Um, while you're listening to us, we just want to give our side of the whole ordeal and we think that it'd be kind of interesting. So yeah, Lucas carry on into other things. <laughs> so actually, before we jump right into the whole edits versus montage thing, I figured that we would focus this episode just for editing in general, since we would get to share so a few things from editors, not just uh, montage editors. So to start off. I actually kind of want to do a round table and uh, want everyone to explain how they got into editing in general and into paradise. I picked Jamie. Oh, right, shit. Jamie go first. All right. <laughs> so, How'd you get into editing first? So I was, I think before I even started editing, I was making like, I was a Halo 5 sweat and I started mm-hmm. making montages on my phone. <laughs> 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 oh my god! Yeah, it was you I and someone else, right? This. I don't know. I forget who else edited on their phone. It must have well, been someone Halo. else in Paradise did. Oh, in Paradise, Halo? I don't know. I think someone else in Paradise did. I don't know, but uh, Maybe Adam. soon after that, I was like saving up for a PC or a laptop, and uh, that's because I wanted to become an editor like Brendan at the time. He was starting to edit, and so basically, he was uh, ins- my main inspiration at the time. And, uh, I don't know, from there I just started editing, I learned Sony Vegas, uh, then moved on to After Effects when I joined Paradise, because Brooks Thanks to yours me. truly. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, and when I joined Paradise, I was making high enough, and, uh, I was basically, I wasn't even planning to app, I just did it last minute, just put on the logo and said, fuck it, I'll give it a shot, and they accepted me in. So that's basically my editing story. Oh, damn, you didn't even really care? Might as well just kick you now. Dang, you got <laughs> fucking kicked on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to bring the news to you. Okay, okay, Lucas, you go next because I, I don't want to talk. You don't want to talk? <laughs> well, I mean, you did, You can say how you got into editing, not into Paradise, really. That's, uh, you were there from the start. Okay, uh, editing... Um, so I was uh, a Halo 4 ninja kid who got Sony Vegas and tried to make montages when I literally had no idea what was going on. Um, I remember at one point I was so lost that I was watching After Effects tutorials when I didn't even have After Effects and I was editing in Sony Vegas and I don't even know what I was doing there. Um, and that's pretty much where I got started and it was just, I was making montages pretty much just like that. Uh, and then one day, uh, Och, Jack, uh, uh, who was another original founder of Paradise, um, messaged me G Pagan's edits, and we were like, we were both like, holy boys, this is nuts. And so we both started trying to do that. And my first edit was something I made in one day. It was called Castaway, and it's about to hit its two year anniversary. Um, and it was so bad. Uh, I was not good, and I just pretty much just, after I made Castaway, I was just only pretty much uploading edits to my channel, Um, and I just stopped playing video games for clips, except for like a short series of just playing I did, but pretty much, yeah, that's how I got into editing. Um, Really, I just saw G, uh, and before then, I was just editing just because I found it kind of cool, but it wasn't really to edit. It was more for montages, and then actually wanting to edit to edit came from G as inspiration, and then pretty much bouncing ideas off Jack for the rest of the next two years until this point. I only knew about G after 
I actually got into Paradise and you guys started talking about him. You didn't even know who I, I no was idea. until like you had gotten yeah. into Paradise. So don't even start that. Well, I mean, <laughs> you, were, you were like in my comments and stuff under another name, but I didn't know it was you. Yeah, what was that name? <laughs> Hextroid. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Good old Halo 4 ninja name. <laughs> okay. My, mine was kind of like all over the place because my editing kind of like it started, I guess, at Castaway, but I mean, still kind of took a while to evolve to what it is now. So, but Lucas, do you have more of a solid start to editing? Oh, man. Okay. I can say like exactly how I started editing, not just Halo, but like editing in general. All right. Like Ooh. this was back in, damn, when was this? When did Modern Warfare... Did Modern Warfare 3 come out before Black Ops 1? I think Modern I think Warfare 3 came out in like 1999. I'm going to, okay, I'm going to search it right now. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think it came before. <laughs> November 8, 2011, and Black Ops 1 was... Wow, Google gives me the answer before I even type enter. This some advanced technology stuff. Yeah, Black Ops 1 came before. So like, yeah, I started in Black Ops 1. Back in 2010. Halo okay. Reach. Um, Halo Reach came out in 2011, I think. 10. Yeah, 2010. Really? Yeah, 10, 10, 10. 10. Yeah. Anyway, so I started with Black Ops 1. And way back in the day, I was... Um, I somehow found myself in a clan. I don't know oh. how. And it was the Drop Clan or something like that. There, there's, there's still a YouTube channel there. Like in a previous video I made, I said I asked people to like find my very first edit, and it's somewhere in that channel. So there's a hint for you. Ooh. But okay. It was so bad. I don't know how I'm still how how that, those videos are still up, but it was just hilarious to watch. So anyway, I find myself in that clan, and they actually um, told me to start. You know, like they were making uh, clan tajers or something, and I was like, oh, I can edit them. That's interesting. That's something I may want to get myself into. So then I started making montages for that clan. And I think there's like two or three from me on that channel. But like the reason I made my own YouTube channel, well, I had one before, but it was just for like commenting on videos and liking stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I specifically made the, this Bullet Rebel YouTube channel because I was in Canada and I couldn't log in to their account, which was from the US. So it was asking for like a code or something. So then I was like, well, screw it. I'm not going to, if I can't log in, I'll just make my own YouTube channel. <laughs> so then I left the clan made my own YouTube channel. And that's how I started editing. You made your own YouTube channel because you were mad that you couldn't get into another channel. <laughs> yeah, because, well, because they gave me the password and everything to like upload my edits to the channel, which I couldn't do for, for a while. Cause you're a Canadian and then I gave boy. up and yeah, because I was in a different country and it was like, oh, this is a suspicious login activity. So oh, that's for I just made my own channel. Code or some shit. Yeah, I think that's it's like two factor authentication or something that it asked me for. Yeah. Dang. But like, that's how I started COD. And then at some point, I just like was so sick of COD because the game's terrible. Yeah. And then I just like did a hard cut over to Halo for some reason. I don't know why I specifically chose Halo. Backstab would be one. Oh my god, I don't mean me. <laughs> Let's not get into that. Oh boy. Well, actually, the reason I started be being a ninja in Halo was because I was a knifer in Black Ops, or Call of Duty in general. So, in my head, I was like, well, knifing is the closest thing to, like, assassinations in Halo. So I just started doing that. So I became a ninja without knowing what a ninja was. So you were the cancer. So I, I made I made those backstabber videos without knowing there was like that whole L ninja L community <laughs> and stuff. Like oh, I had God. no idea they existed. Oh man, you were living you were living in a whole nother world, man. Just feel feel happy that you weren't uh you didn't have to deal with all that all that whole side of the ninja community. I don't know, man. I was just on my own having fun, stabbing people in Halo 4. That's good. That's good stuff right there. Um, all right. So then that's pretty much we, you and me, Lucas, have already talked about. Oh, wait, wait. Into Paradise. Do you want to oh, mention I how didn't... you got into Paradise? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. How did I get into Paradise? Actually? Okay. So it's... Lucas messages. I think you want to explain this one? Yeah, because I think it was me who you messaged. Um, Lucas messaged me on Skype back in the day, and he 
wasn't in paradise and he didn't even really talk to most of us that much um but he said he wanted to be in a chat with other editors and so he said wait wait wait. yeah so i was in the chat because um i used to be in another chat i think it was uh i think it was chaotic you were in the chaotic chat and then yeah and then there was that whole thing and i just left and then i was like well i don't have a group chat anymore to like chill out and talk to people so then reese joined your chat and then I had told Reese, like, yo, like, let me get in because I want to, you know, chill out and talk to new people. Mm-hmm. And then he added me. And then, yeah, I'll let you continue. Yeah. So either way, Lucas gets in this chat and it was actually kind of bad because there were some misunderstandings in the very beginning from Lucas, th- like trying to joke around. And then some people like took it wrong. And I immediately joined and started trolling. It. <laughs> <laughs> like it was it was just a weird start. Um, But eventually it was just like. Uh, it it was I, I don't even understand how exactly it happened but he joined the chat wanted to talk to us and we started hanging out and then randomly he just made an edit with our logo in it and then we were like is that an app and then he said no and then he uploaded <laughs> it to his own channel and then to our channel like or like he asked he said all right now upload this and we were like what do you mean no no the, the, i was, like i didn't even say that I, like out of nowhere like I think the the conversation before was completely unrelated. And then I come in like a day later. Yo, what's the password? <laughs> Give me the password to the TP account. <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah, so he literally, Lucas weaseled his way into the team somehow. <laughs> and yet he's still here. Um, <laughs> that's terrible though. Like now people are just going to be like, if they want to get into paradise, they're just going to say password, like, yo, can I join your chat? Yo, what? Yo, B, what's the password? <laughs> Yeah, that was terrible, and that's how Lucas got in, and Jamie got in because he apped like a uh, like a normie, and yeah, and we a- and we accepted him. Okay. Yeah, I'm a cool kid. So uh, now that we're past that, let's start talking about editing and our editing workflow um, to start it off. And I guess we can keep going around in the table, I guess, in the same order that we just went. So Jamie, would you start talking about your uh, your editing workflow and how you personally like to build and edit from start to finish? <sighs> All right, so first I get on Sony Vegas with the song that I choose. Then I put down the markers, export it to After Effects, and then uh, from there I decide how I'm going to execute the edit. So I grab, like, I I go hit a clip, record the sins to fit uh, the song, I guess. And most of the time it's on Halo 3, so there's not much I can change on the map or whatever. But, uh,. From there, I guess, um, I make a CC, uh, do work on my Velocity or Twixter, and then uh, then do my Pan and Crop and Shake and all that stuff, and then the effects come last. So that's basically how... Oh, and then I render it and put it through a handbrake and then upload it, of course. But that's yeah. pretty much my... Uh, how much time do you uh, on average spend um on like an edit like say high enough high enough because you've been doing a lot of 3d stuff too right yeah, yeah. oh also yeah talk that's about true your 3D i don't stuff. i don't my the 3d stuff is actually a lot quicker than you think it's it doesn't take that long except for the rendering maybe but uh i i usually spend an entire day maybe just working on the animated cinematics but most of the most of the fun part is actually like doing the comp- compositioning on the 3D, if that makes sense. Like the lighting and the particles and everything around it. That's the fun part. Um, but there's not much to SFM. If you know where to find the models and know how to use it, like if you know how to work with it, it's pretty easy. Um, and high, like most of my projects don't take that long. Maybe. If I if I'm really dedicated to the project, I can finish it in like three days. But sometimes I lose motivation. And I just keep the project in my folders until I decide to finish it, whenever that is. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know. I could spend like kind of. I went on and off on that. Like I spent three months on it, not consistently, but three months on it, working whenever I can to finish that. Yeah, it's like it depends on the work. Yeah, it depends on what it is and who it's for. Like, if it's a montage, I I usually uh, procrastinate (laughs) on that. Yeah, uh, and you spill lube all over your PC. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 
Who did you send that to again? That was one of my. That was like. What was the message? It was so this guy that I was working for for a team. He asked me uh, how the edit was going for their team Taj, and I was like, um, I spilled lube on my on my keyboard, so I wasn't <laughs> able to work on it. Lucas, <laughs> look at the uh, look at the Discord. You could like throw this up in the uh, up in the video, maybe if you feel like it. Oh, you have the message. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> I can't believe you still have that. <laughs> that is amazing. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> the second message you sent. Oh, what is that? Why did you get Brendan involved? Because he was he was he was editing a different part of it and I was like, Brendan's also busy because he, he didn't do any work at all. Like I don't think he's actually done much in it right now. Like Oh man. <laughs> How were you not kicked? <laughs> I, I wasn't like dude <laughs> I'm the only hate but like me and Connor were like the only Halo editors in there, and Kai was editing another part of the Taj. So, I mean, he couldn't really kick me. For doing that. <laughs> oh my god! All right, so I guess I'll go ahead and move on and start saying my editing workflow stuff. Um, uh, like most people, I like will be. I just listen to music all the time, um, and once I hear me like songs and stuff that like inspire me to do something with them, I put them in like a playlist or I like them or something, and uh, eventually. Uh, once I feel like I'm motivated to start making an edit, I will uh, first I'll import this. I do all of my work in After Effects, by the way. I'll import my song, and on the song layer, I lay down all of my base markers uh, for whatever area that I'm wanting, um, and then I do an adjustment layer on top of that for my snare beats, and I go through and mark all my snare beats, and then I do another adjustment layer on top of that for all of uh, my... Um, for all of my like other syncs, like if there's like some lyrics or something like that that I'm gonna throw in or whatever, uh, I'll mark those and then I just like make all of those layers um, hidden so like they don't actually show up. I just use them as like placeholders, um, and then I'll go through and I'll import all of my clips, interpret them to what uh, 30 FPS if they're 60. Uh, usually not though uh, because I just have to record in 30, and I'll do all of my velocity first um, in syncing. And then I'll go from that and I will uh, start working on minor effects. If, I, if I'm going to mask it all the way through and do depth of field, I'll normally do that next, which I have to do within pre-comps. And that can take like a, like up to like a week to finish, um, like an edit's worth of uh, depth of field. And they just go on from effects from that much, uh, from that point pretty much. And I'll pre-comp everything and I'll do my color correction in a, like a, kind of like a group together composition and then add my aspect ratio um and rsmb and all that fun stuff it pretty much that, that's just how i go through almost every project at all that i work on it's just like a really organized um like methodical way that i've been doing it for a very long time um uh, yeah that's pretty much just how i do my edits and they take me about it depends on the work so like if I'm extremely motivated, I'll edit for like nine hours a day for like four days and I can finish an entire edit that fast. Um, but most of the time when I'm just doing regular editing, like I can spend like three or four weeks on like an edit that isn't, isn't even that long uh, just because I just keep working on it on and off or I'm not crazy motivated for it. Um, but I've had projects take an extremely long time before I ever put them out, like a couple months, but uh Obviously, you can tell that because of my upload rate on my channel. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, on all of our channels, it's like that. Yeah, pretty your editor, it's always slow. Yeah. yeah. So, Lucas, you want to talk about your workflow? Uh well, mine's a bit convoluted because, as a machinima cinematographer <laughs> and an editor, I kind of have different workflows depending on the project. Like, ba like, I don't do the montages anymore, but, like, back when I used to do montages, my workflow is different than a machinitage compared to an edit. So I have, like, I'm a weird guy. I have, like, three different workflows. But I guess I can just explain for editing workflow, I guess, because machinima machinimatages are, are going to take forever. Machinima um, cinematographatages. Yeah. Brendan, Brendan loves messing with me about that. I think he's the one that started calling me that. He was. Uh, anyways, yeah, so for edits, I mean, nowadays, it's just, like, constantly SoundCloud stuff. Like, I, I, I noticed you guys started doing that, so I kind of, like, hopped in that. SoundCloud is the underground wave train for everything that you yeah. need to edit to. 
It's literally golden. Like, if you guys are wanting before, to find songs, just SoundCloud. Before, I would always go to, like, Monster Cat and, and just, like, <laughs> take the latest song. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn, dude. That was, that was back in, like, I think it was, like, in the Halo 4 days or early Halo 5 or something like that. 2013. Basically, when I, when I was doing montages, that's when I was always Monster Cat. Because in my head, it was, like, because I'm, I'm a guy who always wants a song that i'm allowed to use in terms of like copyright and stuff like i will never use music if i I'm, if i'm not allowed to use it i will always ask the artist for permission well like, that's just you did thing ask the artist for permission on desolation didn't you but then like he never replied so you just uploaded it anyway oh yeah that <laughs> well that because because in my head i know that they're always going to say yes like there's never an artist that's going to say no unless they're like some big corporation or something yeah. Like, if you're just, like, some small artist, of course you want your music to be promoted in any way. So, in my head, I ask, I make the edit, and by the time I finish it, I get always get a yes. So, that's why. Because it's always stupid to just, like, wait, like, two months for an answer, and then start your edit. I can't yeah. wait for one day when you actually get a no after you've made the edit. <laughs> <laughs> if, I get a, if I get a no, I will just scrap the edit, no problem. I do not mind doing that. I mean, yeah, it's just that would just suck. That would suck. Yeah, but still, it's still fun to do. Yeah. So, yeah, anyway, I always ask for permission for the songs, and that's why I use Monster Cat, because they let you use the song. Demonetized, of course. I don't monetize anything anyway. So that's why I was, like, a Monster Cat fanboy, but I moved away from that. And, yeah, so now it's just SoundCloud all the time. Um, so that's for my songs. Nowadays, I'm into this, like... I always see that, like, in the hashtag of the song, like, Wave i guess that's a genre yeah i don't know yeah i like wave as well you i think you and me have like the same kind of music taste at the moment yeah like you you've linked a few songs before in the discord which you should totally join by the way link in the description um <laughs> yeah <laughs> so anyway that's for songs for recording i don't know if you guys do this well none of you mentioned how you record your angles i guess we could do oh that. yeah okay. but um yeah after I, yeah so in terms of my angles i Again, I'm a weirdo. Like, I storyboard every single one of my edits. So, like, I draw out the angle that I want. I have, like, multiple boxes. I have short descriptions for stuff. So, by the time I get all my angles and everything, and I'm sitting in After Effects, I know exactly what I want to do. There are rare times where I don't. Like, for example, contest edits, I don't really put much effort into them. To me, they're just, like, participation edits. Just to say that I'm, I made something for it. So those are a bit low effort, but every single other edit has a storyboard and I know exactly what I'm doing. And I always try to, since I'm a, you know, machinima cinematographer, I try to um, get the most like cinematic angles that I can. Um, I'm a big fan of the rule of thirds and stuff like that. So most of my angles will respect that, those rules in like uh, filmmaking and stuff. Um, but I, I guess... A weakness of that is that most of my angles are always similar. There's nothing very unique. And, well, we can explain that later in theater mode when we get to that. Oh, shoot. But, um, can, this there, is a long there are a few restrictions. Like, in my head, I can think of an angle in the storyboard, for example. And then when I come to recording, I'm like, oh, wait, I can't do that because this game is awful. Yeah, that happens yeah. to me every single time I go to record. Like, I almost always have this idea of, like, a cinematic I can get. And then, for some reason, there's either a barrier or, like, the camera is just retarded in... Uh, yeah that happens all the time yeah all right so jamie you want to talk about how you do your recording like when you go into like, uh, theater how do you kind of think about it i'm not sure i just kind of i go in uh find the spot i guess where you hit the clip and um i i i don't usually get moving sins because they're a pain in the ass to do especially if you don't have a capture card which i or use the cam. xbox dvr yeah um but I I record still sins depending on how the edit's going. Um, usually I record them faster for some reason. I'm not sure why. But whenever I I use like slow cinematics like in the Prigrex or Goner's clips, um, I just can't work with them for some reason. Um, so I just prefer recording like faster cinematics if that makes sense. But there's not much to it really. Normal my recording. <laughs> All right, uh, me, uh, when I record, I'm I'm a Reach fanboy editor, so that most of my edits that anyone's ever seen are from that. And but pretty much in any Halo, 
my idea is, I don't really storyboard too often. I do sometimes, um, and so then I'll like I'll know what I'm going in to try to record. Um, but what what I do is I, I'll like record the clips first person um, with HUD and then without HUD, uh, and then I will go um, and start recording cinematics. I'll do moving sins and still sins on each part and I'll record probably about 15 to 20 cents per clip um, and I'll just pick like a couple out of those that I like um, but I'll spend like recording is one of the things that I spend most of my time on um, I like to really really think through the kinds of cinematics I'm going for and sometimes they're incredibly difficult and I'll spend like I don't know an hour and a half just trying to get one little movement just right like in this these one clips that I still haven't used yet in an upload there's a cinematic i get through a windshield of a warthog of like a person jumping in the background and the movement for that was absolutely atrocious to to do i remember that it took so long i i just sat i think it, it i'm still i think i still am wanting to go back in and redo it oh and the big thing about me is if i get a cinematic and even though it might look good if i import it into after effects and i can't work with the movement of it properly with whatever's happening beforehand i'll like go back in and re-record that same scent multiple times like yeah i'll do that too yeah like if it's not right i'll go back in and re and re-record recording such a big part of editing and most people don't understand that and that'll that like changes um your your like your product so much more if you would if most if you're like as an editor you think about your footage um before you start even thinking about your editing you need your footage to be perfect uh and it's just as important as how many effects that you can do. And that that's how I pretty much do my recording. Oh, also, in all of my sins, I you have to make sure that your subject um, is in the center of your screen or else you have it balanced in some sort of way. Um, and so you always need to be thinking about that. I see a lot of uh, people when they're recording, they'll like have like, say, if they're trying to center it in on a Spartan or like a gun spinning or something like that in Halo 5 on a plate, it'll be like, way too high or like way too low and kind of cut off at some points you need to like i i always i at least like that bugs me i always have to make sure that my my subject is always like exactly visible for everybody and so i also think about that while i'm recording as well you mentioned earlier that's another thing sorry go ahead. Uh, yeah sorry go ahead. okay so that's another thing that um <clears throat> i love doing when i have black bars is because like say for example i try to put my subject in the middle but when I put it in After Effects, I realize it's a bit off center. You can just like position it downwards, yeah, yeah. If it's and it's still going to be hidden in the black bars. Yeah. yeah, aspect ratio is like like a savior. <laughs> Sometimes. Um, you mentioned earlier that you record with and without HUD. What's like? Why do you do that? I've never done that really before. Is that for the scope or? Um, yeah, you can use it for the scope if you're wanting to. Uh, and you could also use it for like certain like effects like you and you can mask out if you have both you can lay them on top of each other and yeah, mask, mask out, out parts the... of the hud that you don't want and keep parts that you do yeah. and it'll look the same it, it's just helpful whenever you're wanting to do stuff like that it's something that i got from jack way way back in the day yeah, yeah this is something i do because <clears throat> not for well i mean I, I do them for edits just out of habit but they're especially useful for montages because for example um when did I start doing that? Path of Eternity, I think, where like I before I used to mask the HUD elements, but then I got to a point where like, well, I don't want to like have um, like a flag capture or something in the middle of, of the HUD and stuff. So I just recreate the HUD myself. So that's why I need um, a HUD version and a HUDless version so I can have like the kill feed and the scopes and everything. So when I go to recreate it, I can make a one to one recreation. Mm -hmm. It's just helpful. It's like it's just a good resource to have. Yeah. all the time i know another thing about um recording that i forgot to mention <clears throat> was that i always make sure i have three angles like three shots three um yeah three angles of the same thing so for example if in my storyboard i say there's going to be a, a cinematic of like the blue spartan jumping or something so i will go in and record like three different perspectives of that so that way, if I don't like one, then I have two other to choose from, and I won't always have to go back and re-record necessarily, like Brooks was saying. Yeah, it prevents from having to go back. Yeah, so it's just a like a thing that I do for safety reasons. Mm -hmm. All right, so we want to move on to trends going on within editing. 
Oh yeah. Yeah, that's something I kind of wanted to talk about because I re- I remember Jamie was uh, kind of getting heated about that. Yeah. So I mean, what what sort of what's going on in the editing scene that you notice? Not necessarily in Halo, but I mean in editing in general. In if you notice general? things as well. Yeah, I think ever like not specifically him, but like a bunch of other editors have come in the community since like the beginning of 2017 like started doing this edgy style with like sample like really edgy samples about death and like suicide and all that (laughs) shit like it's it's super cringy most of the time most of the edits i find edgy are um like shit that people like people haven't done before that's what i find edgy i don't find like samples and spamming pixel sorter all over the place like edgy i don't i don't i don't know <laughs> you like well, uh, i mean is it because it's is it because it's bad n- like just bad editing or bad is it editing. because it's just like be- or uh, sometimes it is but other times it's just because like it's such an overused style and most of the samples are um they use are really fake like they they sound really fake and and staged almost um I, I can know. understand what you're saying because, like, when this style first started, and I remember when it started, you know, like, kind of gaining speed, yeah, uh, at like twenty late 2016 ish. Um, before then, it was really cool because it, there was a shock factor to it, and when you would watch edits with that kind of um, theme and style in it, you were like, "All right, this is like unique, this is different, and this is like it's like showing something." But yeah. now. Like, sometimes people make edits that are still like that, and they're still unique, and you can tell that they're from the heart, but it's really easy to tell when someone's faking it. Like, if you're, like, happy in the world, and everything's going good, and you make an edit about how depressed you are, which, you, I mean, you might, I mean, it just, you can feel, you can feel it being, like, just like a show, Yeah. and there's no longer, like, and what makes those edits good is, like, the whole is the whole like this means something is, and this is important um because sometimes those mo- those uh, not montages edits lack in a in some kind of skillful things for a reason like if it's like a really important thing it doesn't have to have all these crazy effects as long as they like captured this atmosphere perfectly and if you're trying to capture that atmosphere in a fake way it's really easy to tell um yeah and that kind of just like degrades the whole wave of edgy in quotation mark editors who think that that's what everything has to be yeah, and I can sometimes tell, like, most of the time I tell if it's fake or, yeah, fake um, or not by, like, their profile picture, their name. Like, if their name is Death This Voyage 78 and they're freaking <laughs> making some some edgy shit, like, it, I know it's fake, 100%. But, you know, like, Iorfic knows how to do it right. Um, and some other, some other COD editors know how to do it right. But most of the time, when I see it done, and especially in the Halo community, it's it's done in, re- in a really bad way. Yeah, it, like current really good edgy edits, in my opinion, really like like one of the best, at least in the Halo scene, is uh, Isaac I Orpheus yeah. or Orpheus now. Uh, his he he's just on another level. If you want to see what edgy should be currently, you should look at him. But also, don't let that be like, don't start copying him. Yeah. But you know. Yeah, just we uh, we just all have some our, of our own complaints and opinions on that whole fake edgy stuff. Well, when you guys say fake, what exactly do you mean by that? Because you can like make a sad, dark, edgy edit just for the fact that you want to like sort of explore that atmosphere and well, yeah, experiment. That's, you don't that's necessarily true, have to be like depressed. A, no, yeah. I, I understand that, and you're right. Um, but it's when people take it further than that. Um, and it's like not about exploring that area and it's more they just about do it because it's popular yeah, yeah they do it because it's popular and they try to make it like i could make like say if i'm if i'm trying to explore that area and i'm not actually like sad or something i can make it like a dark tone like a dark you know like uh uh intense or you know sad kind of tone but uh once i start being like it's just like over and over again i want to kill myself over over and over again like i cry myself to sleep at night like yellow text at the bottom freaking doing 360 spins in 3d space (laughs) then you're like okay listen bud like 
I mean, like, people are free to do whatever they want. Don't get me wrong. This is just, like, an, a complaint I have. And, like, that doesn't mean that I hate those people as, like, editors. I just feel like if they would spend more time rather than trying to fake these emotions, I feel like it's more of, like, a like a publicity stunt. Like, to like people will want to subscribe to them because they feel sorry for them, even though yeah. that there's nothing really going on. Yeah. When sometimes now I'm, there now is, I'm but... afraid to put yellow text. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yellow text is too. cool. Yellow, yellow text, text is cool. Is like I can't do that anymore. Shit, dude. Yellow text is the best. I'm gonna remove all my subtitles from Moses Two now because no, you said that. No, 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 no. I I feel like most people understand what we're saying. It, what did, I hope no one takes any of that out of context and like think that we're dogging on some people for no reason. I mean, like I I don't have any hate, hate for anyone at all about any of this. It's just that's just something that I've been noticing, and I I, I feel like people like could expand a little bit more past that point if they if, if they think that they need to trap all of their content within that same thing because i mean it'll just get repetitive yeah but i mean, I mean like, if you truly feel like that and that's like the only that's like what you feel like you need to make then go for it i mean like if that's what you if that's how you want to express yourself then by all means do whatever you need but like if you're just trying to ride the wave there's no reason yeah um i the best i've seen like an edgy style done is by anti or whatever you want to call him uh, he made an edit called Columbine. It's really fucking. It's actually scary. Um, mm-hmm. He he'd show like he'd get a kill and then it'd flicker to like Columbine shooting footage. It it was fucking nuts. It was weird. Um, Another really good edgy editor out there is Viper with like three R's. Do you know who I'm talking oh, about? Oh, Viper MVM. I, yeah, yeah, I've yeah. seen his edits. His edit, crazy. Yeah, they're crazy good. Like, oh my gosh, I love Viper. Viper and only one Eon is still one of the best that was ever out there for edgy edits. But that dude is going I, through most some of what Viper shit. Made, from what I've seen in Viper, it's not like edgy, I want to kill myself. It's just like mind-melting stuff. Yeah. You don't know what's going on. Yeah, yeah, it, it, that's pretty crazy. But uh, we've been on this topic for a good long time. You guys want to, and I yeah. think we're, I'm already at like 43 minutes. You guys want to go ahead and move on to uh, yeah, let's go into the next topic. Edits versus montages yeah, the, from yeah. our oh, perspective. Boy. The, the the main course the main meal <laughs> load your load your guns boys all right all right so before we actually get into this i need to say that essentially what we plan on doing here is um essentially um respond to the previous podcast from the, the montage podcast from x created so this is just our perspective as editors and so again this is like most opinion based i know like montagers have their own view and opinions on this. We have our own view and opinion on certain things. So just to put that out there, we're not saying, uh, well, most of a bit of what we're going to say is actual facts when we get to like theater mode and stuff, but mm-hmm. some, most of it's some just of like our factual. response to it. Yeah. And, and we'll actually point out, there's a lot of things in, that they said that we do agree with. And, uh, <laughs> and there's some things that we don't on necessarily. And there's some things that we do have to like say that are factual, um, just no, we're not trying to start a fight. This isn't a war. This is just talking. So I mean, to start off, I guess we can start with the thing that we all agree on. I hope, and that was the difference between a montage and an edit. So I, I've mentioned this a few times. They mentioned it as well in their podcast. So basically, just to make it clear that a montage is the focus is the clips, and an edit is edit. Of course, that's the focus. So. Um, if for a montage edit the editor sort of hangs back and the showcase is the clips whereas in an edit you don't care about what you're seeing in terms of the clips you just want to see all the cool effects and things that you can do with that so that's one point that we do agree on in executives podcast that they did say yeah i think that was executed himself who actually said that which was a very well all of them eventually agreed on that of course but he said that first and i very much agree with that what about you jamie yeah I, i completely agree with that um yeah, that's fine. I'd say. I really liked his his, uh, his comparison about the commercial or whatever. Yeah, that was actually that, a really that, good. Analogy. That was really put that's well. That's true. That's yeah. why Mito is very popular because he just does that simple shit that players and you know viewers can enjoy, and then gets away with it. Like he even mentioned in an interview that he doesn't care for like the frame by frame perfect shit that uh, like all PC editors care about. He just does stuff that players will enjoy or which viewers. can be respected, especially yeah. when that's what you're going for. Yeah. All right, but uh, you guys want to start moving on to some of the other stuff? Yeah. 
Uh, yeah. All right. So, I mean, I think you wanted to take this one, Brooks, right? Uh, yeah, uh, sure. I, I can uh, start doing this. Um, so we have a couple uh, things that they said that we can talk about. One thing, was this Apple who said this? Uh, yeah, I think Apple said that. Yeah, if we're if I'm wrong, uh, sorry, but I don't mean to be. I, I'm just this uh, this quote was that uh, they said fast pace uh, velo style is a new trend, um, which first uh, and then they say turn up uh, turn speed up to sync and then slow it down. And there's nothing wrong with the style, but it doesn't work in montage edits or Halo. Um, to reply to this, one, it's not a new trend. It's just that's syncing and that's been around for an extremely long time. Um, turn up to sync and then slow it down that's uh velocity that's supposed to be that's like an interpretation to the song um and that's been used in i mean even halo montages for a really long time it's just like it's just a better it's like a smoother way now it's just improved and uh and there's nothing wrong with the style but it doesn't work in montage edits or halo which i have to like very much disagree with um anything can work with halo you can't classify effects or styles to games i mean that's just i mean that's just kind of in, like uh not immature what's the word for it ignorant. Uh, yeah ignorant um like halo is a game halo and it has a theater mode it can be used in any way that anyone wants it to and with montages if yes if like the clips are being crazy covered up and the editor i mean the player doesn't want that i mean it's it is the player's montage and that's not right don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that velocity itself doesn't cover up clips to an, if you use it properly. Um, of course, if you don't really know what you're doing and you start speeding up past like an entire section of the clip, I mean, yeah, that would be terrible. But um, you can still use velocity to sync up in montages and it'll be like very good. Um, and even like start showing mo most of the clip that anyone really wants to see. Um, but uh, then again, that is a style and a, and a player doesn't have to have that in his montage or he can tell the editor that they, he doesn't want that kind of style used, but I don't think that you can say that it doesn't work in montage edits or halo. I mean, I just think that's, that's a very incorrect statement. What yeah. Do you guys think? And I think, uh, they got that stereotype from very old edit that I made. It was for, uh, Ty I think typhoon one of the, I won't like a player Halo 3 player I remember that yeah um and I used a shit ton of velocity on him like and I doing it all wrong because I was new to editing and so I think they may have may have gotten that stereotype um from that but if you look at something like uh, Juvenescence by Brendan like he does everything perfectly like how yeah I was gonna mention that yeah that's like the I I edit like that now but um that's like the perfect way to make a montage in my opinion like yeah no, but I mean, then again, that is an opinion. So I mean, like, yeah. if you don't like that, you don't have to like that. But when it comes to velocity style editing for montages, like I agree with Jamie, that is that is actual like perfection. Shout out to my boy Dong out there; he's a beast, <laughs> the Dongster. Yup. What What do you think? Well, Lucas? I will say that um, I kind of do agree with them to a certain extent, where they say they specify it's for like it doesn't work for montage edits. I would say that it works well for edit edits more than montages yeah because simply for the fact that like i don't know culturally halo has never been like that so it, when you put that type of editing onto a montage it kind of throws people off yeah so yeah, i kind of it fits more with just simple edits more than montages yeah and that is true but it doesn't mean that it can't be used for halo just because it hasn't been used in the past yeah, of course yeah i mean like things can change and move on in advance that doesn't like I, I just hate it when like you hear when you see like these montage kids say like uh which I don't mean to be offensive by saying montage kids sorry but uh where they're just like um they're like it's like go back to Call of Duty we don't need your laser effects or something like that I mean yeah. that's just where's the overkill yeah where where yeah, where's is the, the overkill <laughs> oh no <laughs> mint blitz um so I yeah I I think that we've made that point kind of clear and I'm, I'm we'll probably touch on it a little bit more throughout this so like let's just go ahead and move on to the next topic which uh um yeah when when people are like they don't know the differences between an edit and a montage which we've already talked about the definition um so like if you if if you don't know like edits are typically shorter they don't have to be shorter they can be just as long as a montage but it's all about demonstrating editing skill um 
it has nothing to do with the clips at all, other than the fact that we might take time to set up a creative clip or the angles might be very nice because we spend a lot of time on them. Um, most of the time the clips are faked and that doesn't mean that they're fake. Like we're trying to fake them. Like we'll blatantly say that we set up the clips. I mean, it's not like a secret. Uh, and that doesn't mean that we're going to get exposed. It's just an edit. It's about the edit. So like, uh, if you're going to comment on an edit, that's a nice montage. That's, that's stupid. So re read to that. <laughs> just the term, just the terminology <laughs> in general is just like so triggering. <laughs> like, okay, I have two, I have two things to say here. It's like a long time ago for black magic. I got called out in my comments. Someone was saying like, yo, you faked this clip loser. And I was like, what? Why? <laughs> he thinks he thought I faked the clip just because there was no HUD in the edit. Oh my God. And I wanted to hide the gamer tags or something. <laughs> People like it's just and, kids are just ignorant. They just don't know. Um, which I mean isn't a yeah. bad. I mean it's a bad thing. But I mean it's not like we can get mad at you for that. Just we just want to put that out there, like so you know. It, there's and there are times where um, there are times where like for example um, a while back Paragon featured my my latest edit mm -hmm. and they called it a montage and I was so triggered. Oh yeah, I saw that <laughs> and like, I was like, oh no, Lucas, it's not a montage. <laughs> <laughs> oh my <sighs> but god, but I can't get mad at them. Because you love but like me. little things like that just are just so annoying to me. Yeah, there's a there's just a big difference between an edit and a montage. And please, I mean, just for the sake of our sanity, just just don't call our stuff montages if it's not a montage. Just because that could be annoying. But I mean, do what you want. It'll just be annoying. What about you, Jamie? <laughs> uh, what do you think about that's a nice montage? If you had to suffer, uh not really just trolls like people my friends saying that just to bug me but not really actually <laughs> like legitimate comments i don't think one of the worst people to ever suffer from it though is a uh, reese spastic fish he uh he's had to suffer from those comments a lot also the 1.25 speed for maximum enjoyment that's a good that's meme. a new thing he came out with <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right but uh let's go ahead and move on to the next one edit flow versus montage flow before we get into this, I'm going to start this off and explain what flow is because no one knows, that, like from what I've seen, no one understands other than like actual editors and hearing people explain it is so just terrible. So let me explain what flow is. And also, let me start off by explaining what it isn't. Flow is not just... Um, velocity uh some people think that speed up slow down is flow no not just twixter that and oh wait what yeah i said it's not just twixter. oh yeah and it's not just twixter as well flow also twixter is not an effect i mean it's not like you can't say velocity is twixter twixter is an effect that you use to create velocity um but flow is an interpretation of an editor on the song and you can use velocity to complement the flow and it's actually pretty much needed to at least have some flow. And so, like, say if you're listening to a song and it has these downbeats and then it also has these upbeats and you're syncing on the downbeats, flow would be if you would throw in an upbeat sync every now and then to show that you're acknowledging everything in the song. And it's just, like, supposed to catch people off guard with your flow. You want them to think that they know what's about to happen next in the edit, but then you give them something else and it keeps them interested. That's your flow. Your interpretation of the song using your velocity, using your cuts properly, that's flow. It's not speed up, slow down. It's not that simple. And flow can be specific to a certain editor. So like the same song with two different editors, there can be completely different flow because of their different interpretations. So that's I just wanted to throw that out there. That's flow. That's not like that's a, that's a factual fact of what flow is at the basics. And that can't be disputed. A factual fact. Factual fact. Um, and then there's a difference between edit flow and montage flow. Um, technically, uh, edit flow, you can be a lot more drastic with it. Um, it doesn't have to like worry too much about how much you're affecting the clip. Um, in montage flow, you do kind of need to think about how much you're covering up a uh, clip or messing it up or doing something with it. Um, there's a di which we've already kind of touched on, but that's the difference. And I just wanted to make sure I put what flow actually is out there. Another thing is that 
um, from my understanding, the way montage editors use flow is more aligned with like pacing because it, from what I understand, they take into consideration stuff like clip order and like what the actual clip is and stuff. And that's not really, that is flow to a certain extent, but it's not like the edit flow. There's a difference in that. Yeah. What about you, Jamie? What do you think about all this? Do you have anything to say? Um, I don't know. Like, I've never been taught, like, what flow, like, the way you described it. Um, I just kind of, because there's different types of flow, like you said, and it's for each type of editor. Like, um, one of my favorite editors is Foreign Aid, Foreign Aid and he, uh, he doesn't do any type of, like, he doesn't sync to beats. He just makes everything, like really smooth together like the transitions go are really smooth and shit like that but um i used to think that flow was just how it synced up but recently i learned that uh it wasn't just that but yeah i don't think that the montage editors describe flow correctly like i don't know they they seem to think it's something other than what you just described it I'm mm-hmm. not sure what they're talking about when they say it most of the time, but yeah. Yeah. I, well, because I they've never been exposed to it. Yeah. yeah they they've never edited know. that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just think about it like an interpretation, one's interpretation on a song. And yeah. which means there can be like, technically, if you think that since it's one's interpretation, then there can't be any bad flow, but there can be bad flow if your flow like actually won't work at all and just like, or it's non-existent, like there can be, it can be bad. Your flow has to be executed properly. Um, but there isn't like a set way to have to do that. You just have to accomplish it. You have to, you have to accomplish it well. Yeah. But yeah, it, it flow is very complicated and very advanced. Um, and it, it can't be described by a simple synchronization. So you want to get into the last point? Well, actually, not the last point. Second to last point. So execrated, you mentioned this. Um, And again, well, just to clarify again, most of what we've been saying here is like paraphrasing. It's not exact quotes. So just to be be sure about that. Um, So one thing that he says was, um, I don't think he specifically said that. I think he just brought up the point for discussion. But... It's about clip hunting taking more effort than editing. So what are you guys' thoughts on that? Uh, Brooks, you want to start off on that? Or should I? Oh, All right. <laughs> says be right back. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, well. All right. I, yeah, so clip hunting taking more effort than editing. Um, what do you think? So I used to, like, I used to be a Halo 5, so I'd make, like, my own montages of my own. But, uh... I don't know. Um, I'd say editing takes more effort and time just because of the fact that you have to get motivation, think about it. Um, whereas clip hunting, you just hop into the game and like learn learn the spawns. And <laughs> like, as far as I'm concerned, there's not much to it. Like, I I don't see what's so Coming hard from about people clip of hunting. course who used to yeah clip hunt and used to go for that kind of stuff um, like especially in halo 5 <laughs> um you, if you go from a game yeah. like halo 3 all the way to halo 5 um like clip hunting is the easiest thing possible it's nothing hard especially like especially in halo 5 whereas editing, now, of course there are creative clips out there that are yeah really there are cool. creative clips which are the only kind of tages i personally enjoy like i can't stand watching halo 5 multi-kill tages but like some montages where they do creative or like lightning snipes or whatever i'm i I like those kind of tages but um. yeah uh from i guess from my perspective of the whole clip hunting takes more effort than editing i don't think that's true at all because now let me let me explain my, my side uh with first off with playing with trying to get clips in a game you're playing a game and to an extent, you have to enjoy your time there a little bit. I mean, like, there's... I can go ahead and tell you that in an editing software, there aren't any funny moments when you're in an editing software. It's not like there's nothing really exciting unless if you're really into what you're doing. Um, Whereas when you're going for clips and playing a game, 
like it, you'll enjoy what you're doing a little bit. And like you have, there's a reason that you play that game and that's because you're good at it. Also, most editors are very good at getting clips as well. Like we all can play these games like at a very high level um, and we can edit. And so that kind of shows that there's like, if everyone could edit, everyone would edit and players wouldn't go looking for editors. And if everyone could play for clips, everyone would play for clips, but there's definitely, of course, a little skill, skill gap there. Um, but I think that there's more skill and more like dedication and learning and more patience and time and work. Like editing is work, even though we enjoy it. Like people, I've heard players say like, well, why would you edit? Like, why do you want to get paid? Because like I spend all this time going for clips and I don't get paid for that. Why do I need to pay you? It's because it's a skill. It's an actual skill that has to be acquired and grown over time. Like yeah. we've been editing for years and it's taken us a really long time to get to the point to where we are at. Um, it's just different than clip hunting. Going for clips on a video game is nowhere near as difficult as it is to grow yourself in an editing software, yeah. especially when you get to levels like we are at now, which I'm not trying to brag. Um, I can go and tell you most of the people in Paradise are nowhere near like mastering our programs. And there's like people way, way ahead of us. Um, I'm just saying that like, like you, when you get into more complicated stuff, which most people don't even know that we're doing behind the scenes, they don't, it's stuff that happens that we don't even want you to see. It's supposed to just kind of complement what's going on, but it's really difficult to do. It's just, no, it clip hunting doesn't take, they, you can't say that the, the player put more time into going for these clips because it's not the same and it's nowhere near the same. Because like when you're thinking about editing, you got to think about all the time that you put into the past. They didn't put five years into like researching and learning a program and learning all these different things. Like they, they put five years into doing the exact same thing over and over again yeah. versus we have to do the exact same thing over and over again and more. So personally, I have to say that's very false. That's not true at all. And every player that's come up to me expects me to like, it assumes that I'm going to like editing for them or expects me to edit for free just because like, I, I don't understand what goes through their mind, but like, they come up to me, say, hey, want to edit my montage? And then when I say that I charge, it just kind of like either block me or just completely <laughs> <laughs> leave my chance. <laughs> um, it's it's pretty stupid. Like, I, I don't understand. Um, I don't understand what goes through their mind when like they think I'm going to enjoy editing their clips when I can be editing or they assume that I'm going to get like or they tell me that I'm going to get like a bunch of exposure for editing their clips or whatever like the halo community is basically dead i'm, I'm like <laughs> I, I, i'm not gonna get i i've edited tajas for quite a few people and for each one i don't think i gained a single subscriber like it's it's pretty stupid nothing against reclaimer i don't, I don't i'm not i don't hate reclaimer at all or anything but i mean i did i made his 1000 sub montage and i have a lot less than 1000 subs and this isn't his fault at all. Don't get me wrong. Um, I'm just saying, like, if you if someone's saying that you're going to get a ton of exposure from editing a montage for someone who's much bigger than you, I got three subs from that. I got three. Yeah. I remember because I wanted to see how many I would get from making that because I'd never made a montage for someone that big before. I got three. It's <laughs> not like you're going to blow up. So don't. I don't want to see any players with big heads coming in saying that you're going to blow up for editing my montage. It doesn't yeah. work like that. I mean, I guess you can get your name around, but if you can make good enough, like, edits on your own or edit for, like, your friends or whatever, and you can get your name around better editing for people who you enjoy or for yourself, like, mm -hmm. and you'll get in the actual editing community, whereas if you edit for montagers, you're just kind of going into the montage community, which most editors don't want to go there. <laughs> Don't well, again, that, that, that falls into Execrated's point earlier about the whole uh, commercial thing. Like, it's expected that you're not going to gain any subs or anything because, yeah. let's be honest, no one's going to watch a montage and be like, oh, I wonder who this awesome editor is. Let me go look at the description. No, they're just going to watch the clips. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's true. Which I, uh, and that's my point. It's just like players think that that is a drawing in thing, and we're just pointing out, no, no one's going to do that. They just care about the clips. Yeah. They don't care about the time that we put into it when it comes to a montage, at least. Yeah. But 
but there's different things all around there uh it's just there you just need to know like there's a reason that like we that we charge and there's a reason that it's like a it's work it's it takes effort it's not easier i mean it's not yeah it, it doesn't take less effort than going to hit clips on halo 5 yeah and the cod community it's or any community csgo whatever it's a standard that you pay your editor for work like it's it's the standard you don't ask an editor to edit for free it's it's retarded honestly mm -hmm. so essentially what well i mean i guess both of you share the same viewpoint so essentially you're saying editing takes more effort because clip hunting at the end of the day even if you don't get the clip you want necessarily you still have fun yeah mm -hmm. okay so I mean, that's kind of true because you can still be like, oh, I didn't get that Killianera plus three on this certain mountain that I wanted, but I went 50 and zero, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, or it's, some it's weird not glitch happened like, or something or like something, something like funny. That. It's just the fact that there is a, it is a game. And at the end of the day, you're playing a game rather than like spending years working at something. It's yeah. just different. Like, like it's different. It, it mean, it's more fun to get good at halo than it is to get good at after effects yeah 100 percent. like it's just more fun to play a game than it is to work in a program i'm all in terms of my own opinion i'm gonna have to play the devil's advocate here and say that like clips take a bit more effort than editing because to me i don't see editing at all as like work or a chore because i've never really experienced that thing that whole ordeal of like um having to edit for someone else and treating it as like a transaction and getting paid and stuff i just do it for the fun of it so to me it takes a lot more effort and time for the clips i i guess you could say that it wouldn't be true if we're talking about multi-kill clips because that just like you just smurf and you get easy nares anyway mm -hmm. it takes a bit of skill because you have to know spawns and stuff but still it takes a lot less than knowing how to handle after effects yeah. but in terms of like imagine like okay hyena okay mm -hmm. like the clips that he gets i would say that that takes a lot more effort than just editing uh, at a montage level not like an edit edit yeah which is like what a we montage did edit. though we were talking about unless if your clips are like crazy creative and like yeah we were talking yeah. about yeah. like creative um you know whatever whether that's like glitches or you know like creative when you get to that skill level yeah. of playing that's different but i'm talking about general playing the game and general like montages i don't want to name out from, a bunch of names from experience like let me tell you okay blood moon all right i spent i god knows how many months getting just like two clips all right i and there were times where i i went for the clip I missed it like 10,000 times. I hit, finally hit it. I go in theater mode. It's glitched. I have to go for the clip again. I don't like how it, the clip looks, so I go for it again. Stuff like that. Yeah. That takes me a lot longer than editing all of it in After Effects. Mm -hmm. But then also you have to remember to bring in all the time that you put in being it because now it's easy. Like I can go into a clip, right? I can bring anything into After Effects right now and sync it up and do all these effects and stuff that I know how to do without having to work that hard at it. But, like, throw me back five years ago um, when I was just starting on Sony Vegas and I didn't even know how to cut a clip and I couldn't even imagine masking something every single frame for so-and-so amount of time or learning how to do all of that. It's different. Um, you can't just talk about how long it would take you now. You have to talk about how long it would have taken you then or how long it would have taken you to get to the point that you are now. Okay, so, I mean spend a, quite a lot of time here so just to wrap things up um on this point we're just saying that clip hunting takes less effort than editing depending on what the clips are in terms of in comparing it to the actual editing so mm -hmm. that's it for that i guess and we'll get into my favorite of all oh, oh no <laughs> the one i've been waiting for this is gonna be roasted we about to do it <laughs> <laughs> all right it's theater mode time. Oh, yes. Let's go. Oh, okay. So, okay. This is the one thing that was said in the podcast that made me flip my chair. Like, I like I literally have a broken wheel because of it. 
I'm not even kidding. I remember when you did it. I have a broken wheel because of this, all right? <laughs> there was a point in the podcast where, okay, I, I'm not going to be mean. So I'm, I don't want to name names. So someone <laughs> said... <laughs> Should we just I deleted the, the name, right? <laughs> Someone said that the the theater mode in Call of Duty is would be how Halo 5 theater is right now, okay? To paraphrase what was said, that's essentially <laughs> comparing Call of Duty theater mode to Halo 5 theater <laughs> mode and saying they are the same. Boy, you do not know what you're talking about. <laughs> Okay, let's just go. Let's just go through a quick list of what Call of Duty offers, shall we? Yes. <clears throat> one, very rarely are animations or player movement not one to one. What I mean by that is, for example, if when you're playing Halo and you're like you shoot someone and their body falls a certain way, if you go into theater mode in Call of Duty, it will be the same animation. Nothing weird, no swimming Spartans, no floaty stuff, nothing. Everything is one-to-one. -one. Your shots are accurate. You're not going to shoot someone in the air and then get a headshot in theater mode. Everything is one-to-one. -one. So that specific thing that the person said in that podcast is false because I've edited Call of Duty up until Black Ops 2, and I know that is a fact that everything is one-to-one. -one. I don't know how it is in Black Ops 3. I'd assume it's even better it, from it, what it, I've Black seen. Black Ops 3 is really good because even on console, you have point one time skill. Yeah, COD. That's COD another thing. Hold like on. The best theater uh, in terms of COD, though, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So Call of Duty also has the best console theater of all time. No contest. Just <laughs> that stop is there. True. The best theater of all time. It is right? the best. It is insane. It is the best console theater. Specifically, I'm saying that because I don't know about PC theater at all. But PC um, COD in, in terms of other games, well. I don't know theater mode in other games. Dude. But for console, Black Ops is the best. Mm -hmm. Right. That, so here, here, here's a few things you can do as well. You can create clips within the theater playback, just like you could in previous Halo games, but we're talking about Halo 5 specifically, because Halo 5 is trash. It is. So, it is so you bad. can create clips. You can, you know, if you don't like it, you can scrap it and create another clip. All that stuff. Point one time scale. Let's explain like, what that I is, because I don't know if people understand that. or think, I, will, no, I would murder a baby just for having point one time scale in Halo. <laughs> That would be incredible. And we already have okay, gotten yeah, as close as we can go ahead. custom games, but it's different. It's not the same. It's not actual point one time scale. Yeah. So do you want me to go, explain, go what explain what it is? Go ahead and explain what that is. Okay, so look. First off, interpreting footage. The, good, the thing that's good, I don't want to see any more edits or montages. Montages, I'm saying montages. It rendered out and uploaded in 60 FPS. And God knows, no to taking 30 uh, FPS clips and V-dubbing them or whatever you want to do to make them look like they're 60. <laughs> that is the most dumb thing that I have ever seen anyone do. I'm sorry if someone gets mad, but let me explain why. First off, it's it, you can't fucking make 30 FPS, 60 FPS. I'm sorry. That's no. It doesn't work. You're ghosting frames. It makes it look bad. Um, second off, the good thing about 60 FPS is so you can interpret it to 30 fps and edit that now whoa 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 let me explain the reason you want to do that is because it makes the clip half speed while running at a solid frame rate so then now a clip that was at 60 fps you have it playing at 30 now you have a uh, double the time on the clip so when you're doing your syncing you have more frames to use and you won't drop frames or warp and that's just 60 to 30 okay let me explain point one time scale, and this is why COD theater is absolutely amazing. You can put the f the theater at point one speed. This isn't like tapping the right trigger on Halo. This is like smooth playback, no dropping frames at point one speed. That's a tenth of the regular speed of the clip. If you record that at 60 FPS, okay, record point one time scale at 60 FPS. Say you interpreted the clip to 600 then it would be playing at regular speed playback. That means the clip is now 600 FPS. Then, without ever having to do that, that's just theoretical so I can explain what happens. You interpret that to 30, you have so many frames, more frames that can fit in your mother's ass to edit. <laughs> <laughs> it is beautiful, okay? 
COD can do that on console. On console. Okay? Point one time skill is the best. End of story. Just because of that, COD Theater is better than any Halo Theater that has ever been around. And God knows better than Halo 5 Theater. Halo 5 Theater, in my opinion, is one of the absolute worst theaters that was ever created. Ever. The worst. 343 okay. is terrible. It is the worst. All right. So, so that's a time scale. <laughs> <laughs> I think the message was made. So now, accurate gunshots, we already said that. Another thing, they have a timeline and timestamps. <laughs> you can literally see where you are. Oh, it, it, okay. So in Call of Duty, you can see there was a flag cap at 1 minute 5 seconds. There's a blue mark there. Oh, there was a death at 4 minutes 5 seconds for this player. All that stuff. You can have first person view for not just yourself, but everyone else. You can skip Halo, forward. Think, you can skip forward. Yeah, you forward. can skip. All that stuff. Okay. And for PC Halo, uh, not Halo, uh, PC Call of Duty, I'm sure you have other stuff that's cooler, like green screen and depth of field and stuff that you can't do on console. So that's even better. Yeah. Um, there's also CFGs and all sorts of shit you can play around with, mods and whatever for... Um, you can mod console as well, but it's even easier to mod PC. Well, no, mod, it, and you, you can, can mod console, but it's not in the way you want to mod it. Like, it's it's aesthetic mods, if that makes sense. Like, it's um, yeah. making shit move around in the map or bots or whatever it is like just... I right, hold up I'm about to end Halo 5's entire career <laughs> Dolly camera oh whoa whoa now did you hear that what what, what is that Dolly camera Dolly camera really oh <laughs> Halo 5 what does Halo 5 have Thumbsticks. You can't even change your sensitivity with the thumbsticks in Halo 5. Like, in older Halos, you could change your sensitivity to 1 to make it a little bit better. By the way, it was still shit. But in Halo 5, you can't even do that. It's locked at an extremely fast rate. So let's talk about Dolly Camera. I don't think anyone knows what Dolly Camera is. You can go ahead, Lucas. I'll let you have this one. It doesn't exist. Okay, to put it short, it's essentially keyframes within the theater file that you can put you're talking like, like an editor specific... talk even dumber for the people that don't understand that <sighs> well i can't ex i can't explain dumber than that but i'll explain it you got right, go ahead then so it's like imagine in real life you're holding a camera and you let it float you just let go of it and it floats there and you walk away and then you stand somewhere and then you tell it to go over and around you and you press a button and boom, the camera does it. You don't have to do anything, and it's perfectly smooth. And it looks exactly where you want it to. It never messes up. Dolly yeah. camera. Um, this is gonna sound funny to COD editors. Like if they if they listen into this like podcast and hear all of this shit, like how we're amazed by all this shit. Like they're most of them are complaining that it's like if they have like six hundred FPS clips, they'll complain that it's not like twelve hundred. It's fucking hilarious. Yeah, I've seen people complain about that before. Meanwhile, we have we, ha we have to be satisfied with sixty. Um, dude, I recorded thirty FPS. <laughs> I recorded thirty. <laughs> okay, but like Halo Five and thirty, like that's just fucking painful. Yeah, that's true. Reach isn't that bad compared to it. Yeah. Another thing I forgot to mention was file share, oh, which I hope peace. it better be in Halo Six, or else I'm gonna punch someone. I'll file share is like the reason that i don't edit montages anymore like i don't edit for others at all because there is no file share mm -hmm. because without that i cannot get angles i cannot record the way i want i can't record at the quality i want instead of being giving this crap like two megabytes per second 30 fpx clips i don't want to see that so without file share i can't do anything yep that's very true we need file share back yeah, I don't think COD has that. Halo Five doesn't. Yes. Are there any, let, let's see what it, what I missed for Halo Five. Um, yeah, the garbage animations. Oh my god! No death animations. Jesus Christ! I don't want to see yeah, another you get, arm you get coming shot from and the you penis. Just flop. Like it's so bad. Like, God, dude. The, the backwards hands. <laughs> <laughs> the animation. You die and it looks like you're doing Thriller. Dude, they do have the, the, That's the only animation that they've actually like kind of programmed in and, the, and just freaking 
thriller Zed out, like does the Michael Jackson hee hee, like up in the top, you know, the hands just go and just break in backwards. It's literally what they just, uh, some dude at 343 was like, you know what we need? We need, like, we need hand, we need wrists to be broken on every single death animation. Also, after that happens, they're going to fall normal for two seconds, and then the arm's going to go through their stomach. All right? <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds great. <laughs> now, guess what? Once it hits the ground, it looks like they're all dead and stuff, but when you open that thing up in theater, they're alive, dude. They're going to be standing straight up everywhere you want them to be. <laughs> You've got all these bodies standing up. And if you press skip a few times, they start swimming for no reason. <laughs> Yeah, dude, if you just skip a couple times, they're swimming up in the air. Don't worry. This is what the people need. This is what the people want. All in all, oh, Halo 5 Theater sucks. It's nowhere close to COD. No. 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 Okay, there, I put it like so many other points, but another thing I just have to say is, look. Look at, look at Black Ops, okay? Just look at the UI. What do you see? You see buttons. What do we have? We have literally five buttons, nothing else, just at the bottom of the screen. In Call of Duty, you can you have the timeline, you have you have like the the um the HUD Codcaster mode and yeah, stuff. Yeah, you want on the on like if you want the you can 100. you can toggle the HUD to show certain things. Yeah. You have player outlines and everything. Halo Five has literally five buttons, and that's it. And you don't even know where you are. <laughs> you just like skip until until you see that clip. Oh yeah, there it is. Oh, I, I skipped too much? Oh, let me have to play back the entire theater file again. I love the beginning of the Halo 5 um, things that we have listed off. It literally just says Halo 5. What the actual fuck is this garbage? <laughs> LMAO. Yeah, you gotta start it off right, man. Dude. So, yeah. No, Halo 5 theater is terrible. And we will complain about it till the end of our days. We have yeah. every right to complain about it. We were debated. So, I don't want to hear anyone say... But you edit with it, so like, if you don't like it, then just don't edit with it. We don't have anything else. We have nothing else. Nothing. And guess what? Backwards compatible Halo Reach, why don't we just go back to that? Guess what? I do go back to that. Also, guess what it's happens? Even worse. It's even worse. <laughs> they messed up an emulator and have remained to not fix it. If you record something, first off, you can't skip backwards. Forget about ever doing that. If you mess up a clip, you're going to have to back out and go back in. Also, every time you back out or skip in any direction or even pause, you risk corrupting the entire file and having to redo the clip. So that also makes montaging on Halo Reach, if for any montager that cares, impossible for their editor to record anything. Because guess what? Your clip is gone. Unless if you record live. And who the fuck wants to edit with a HUD? No one. <laughs> so, no. They've messed up that as well. Literally, 3 for 3 has messed up every single possible thing for Halo 5 content creators and editors in general. So, no. Just theater in Halo is at its absolute worst that it has ever been. Ever. And I will complain all the time. If anyone ever says anything about it, don't at me. <laughs> this basically went from replying to a quote to just ranting on theater mode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's well-deserved, though. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, so, so, I mean, that's pretty much it. That's all we had to say. <laughs> that's pretty much, yeah, yeah there we go. Uh, There's a lot more, but uh, let's just forget about it. Yeah. Okay, well... So on that note, yeah. anything else to add? No, not really. Not really. I think I'm good. I think my rant is over. All right. Well, now I'm kind of sad that Reese wasn't here because he's just going to be so mad now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Reese. We'll get you in the next one, buddy. Who am I even kidding? He's not going to listen to this. <laughs> yeah, two hours. How long has this been? Like two hours? Whatever. Yeah, something oh, like shit. that. It's too long. <laughs> so anyway, we're just going to wrap it up here. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'm going to have a lot of fun editing all of this. <laughs> um, uh, I actually don't know what next episode is going to be, but um, I guess leave a suggestion in the comments if you want to see us talk about other stuff. Hopefully this showed, uh, this showed the more fun side of the podcast that we were mentioning. Yeah, I mean, the first episode was just like boring explanations. Yeah. This is a lot more uh, exciting, I guess. Yeah, it'll only be getting better from here, but... Thanks for watching, everybody. See you. Peace. H.